Hi, and welcome to lesson number two in the Web Starts Getting Started Core Competencies video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a responsive website using Web Starts. That means one that looks great whether someone's viewing it from a desktop, laptop, tablet, or mobile phone. From lesson number one, you should be familiar with the Web Starts page editor. That's what we're viewing now. In the page editor, there are some guidelines. These are the dotted lines that run vertically down the right and left side of the page. Those are 980 pixels apart. So all of the content of your website stays within these 980 pixels for most of the templates that we offer here at Web Starts. The reason we do this is to ensure that even if somebody is coming to your website and viewing it on a very small screen, they'll be able to see all of the content without scrolling from side to side. However, a negative side effect to that is that if you expand out your browser window on a very large screen, it may seem at times like there's just too much negative space to the left and to the right of your content. Like everything is just right in the center of the page. So what we're gonna do in this video is show you how you can make this page responsive so that as the browser window width increases, your content takes advantage of that space and it expands out. To create this effect, we're going to be face to create this effect, we're going to be focusing on two main sections of your website. The header, which is at the top of the page, and the footer, which is at the bottom of a page. If you remember from lesson one, elements that are placed in the header and footer appear in the same location on each page of your website. By making changes to the header and footer, we're going to be effectively making changes that affect each page of your website. As a reminder, when you select an element and it's in the header or footer, it's going to be highlighted in green. That's different than elements that appear in the body. When those are selected, they're highlighted in blue. In this first step, I'm going to create some space on my page. I'm going to do that by hovering over this horizontal dotted line that indicates the bottom of the header and drag it down my page. That increases the height of my header and gives me some room to work with. Next, I'm going to be adding a strip to the space that I created. So I move over to the sidebar, click on Add, find Strip, and then drag the strip into the header. Note that it's highlighted in green, indicating that it's now part of the header. I'm now going to split my strip into two columns by clicking the Settings icon and clicking the Add Column button. I'm now going to justify the content that I add to each column to the left for column number one and to the right for column number two. So I click on column number one to select it. I click on the justification option and I select justify left. I click on column number two, click the justification option and select justify right. I'm now going to attach my design elements to the columns within the strip by clicking to select them and then dragging them into the appropriate column. Next, select the entire column, select the smart handle, and drag all of the content up the page. Select the dotted line that represents the bottom of the header and drag it up to the bottom of the strip. Let's preview our changes by clicking File, Preview, and opening up our website in a new browser tab and then I'm going to zoom out to show you what that would look like on a very large screen. So now instead of having all this white space on the left and right we've got our menu and our site name aligned to the left and right of either side of the page. Now we're going to go back and just do the same thing with the footer. So we're going to scroll to the bottom of the page. We're going to click the dotted line at the bottom of the footer and just increase the height of the footer. We're going to click add and we're going to select the strip option and drag it into the footer. Notice that you have to click this button that says add to footer in order to add things to the footer. Once again I'm going to split the strip into columns by clicking the settings icon. This time I'm going to be making three columns so I'm going to click the add column button twice. 
Notice that I have the third column selected. I'm going to justify that one to the right. I'm going to select the second column and leave it justified center. I'm going to select the first column and justify it to the left. Now I'm going to drag my elements into each column starting with this form and then I'm going to drag this copyright to the center column and I'm going to drag this social bar to the column on the right. I want these to be aligned perfectly so I'm going to go back select each element and then select the align middle option for each of these. And for this text box here, I'm going to select the text, justify the text to the center just so that it is centered as well. I'm then going to shore up that little space at the bottom. I'm then going to select the entire strip and use the smart handle to drag it up to the top of the footer. And then I'm going to use the dotted line at the bottom of my footer and drag it up to the bottom of the strip. Let's click File. Preview, open up a new browser tab once again. I'm zoomed out, I scroll to the bottom of the page and now you can see that those design elements are aligned to the right, left, and center of the page, similar to what we did with the header earlier. So far we've created a responsive website that looks great on a very large screen. Let's talk about making your website look great on a very small screen like a mobile phone. To work on this, click on the mobile icon in the top right to open up the mobile page editor. This gives you a mobile phone format that's very narrow and tall. Just like in the desktop editor, you can click to select an element and drag it where you want it to be displayed on your mobile page. You also have the options to align things and change the text size as well as justify the text. So for example, I'm going to justify this text to the center just because I think that looks better on a mobile phone. And then you can also do things like change the color. For instance, if you wanted to change the color of your menu, you could do that by selecting the menu and then selecting from the available colors, that kind of thing. Down here in the body of the website, of course, you can use the smart handles to create space just like you could in the desktop editor as well and you can uh, drag and resize these images as well as these text boxes. If you want to hide an element, select it and then just click the hide icon. It will appear over here on the left sidebar. You can then click the unhide icon in order to get it to display on your website once again. Once you're happy with the mobile view of your website, you're going to want to click the settings icon and make sure that you've enabled the display mobile view option and clicked save. That way when somebody views your website from a mobile device, they'll be served the mobile version by default. Well, that's it for creating a responsive and mobile version of your website using WebStarts. Be sure to stay tuned for the next lesson.